if we think about global warming, which we can all agree is a dire problem and a problem that's getting worse, the instant I start thinking about it as a type of pollution, as pollution caused by greenhouse gases, the problem becomes clearer to me. And I say this, I don't say this to minimize the problem or, or trivialize the problem at all. All I'm trying to do is categorize the problem properly. Because once you think about greenhouse gases as pollution, then you understand the toolkit for addressing them. And in particular, the toolkit that works really well for other kinds of atmospheric pollution is put a price on the pollution. Make it a thing that businesses have to spend on, like they spend for every other material out there, and then watch them try not to spend money on it. Watch them flee from that cost. This is what drove down our air pollution levels so much. Uh, I imagine a lot of us in this room have at least two friends who are economists. <laughs> if you have at least two economist friends, you realize that economists agree on nothing. And your two friends or any number will just fight endlessly about any topic in economics. I say this to bring up the fact that economists are not fighting about the most powerful tool to address global warming, to address greenhouse gas pollution. This is an open letter arguing for a carbon tax. And in particular, a carbon tax where the government doesn't keep the money, it just sends it right back out to the citizens of the country, called a carbon dividend. This letter was originally signed by a few dozen economists. By now, the open letter has been signed by more than 3,500 prominent economists. This has never happened before in the history of the discipline. They would not sign a letter about the sun rising in the east. But the, the level of unanimity here about the, the most powerful policy tool that we have to combat global warming is just incredibly clear. It's very frustrating that we're not doing this, we're not even taking it very seriously. Um, here's where we left our whales in the early 1970s. That's where the blue whales were. Here's where they are now. They're not all the way back, and they might never get back to those previous levels. But one phrase that I learned from Stuart the last time he and I were together is one that I just carry around with me all the time. Uh, Stuart didn't invent this, but he, he said it, and I thought it was fantastic. It's nature bats last. And if you carry that idea around, you just come to the conclusion that, look, we, we make mistakes, and we shouldn't make them. But if we can get out of the way, if we can leave, if we can leave the field, let the oceans repopulate, don't hunt there anymore, stop farming that land, and let it go back to nature, nature can rejuvenate. It's astonishingly resilient. Nature actually bats last. Thank you.